first award is a war produced by the Clinical Legal Education Association. Now the Clinical Legal Education Association is the leading association of professors of clinical education in this country. Uh, and they uh, honor, uh, they allow one student per law school to receive their highest honor of outstanding uh, clinical student advocate, outstanding clinical, outstanding clinical student advocate award. Uh, in many ways, I like to compare it to the Nobel Peace Prize. It's like the highest you can get in this business, right? It's the highest, you're not gonna get any higher. You can't, not in this business, you know? Uh, it's like, it's, that, it's the highest you can receive. And uh, we're, we are honored today, um, we we're honored today to uh, present it to uh, Remy and uh, Abiton and, uh, and, uh, and we'll be, uh, it'll be framed and it'll be uh, ready for her to uh, hang in her wall, hang in her wall and show her, show her family. Let me just say a few words about uh, Remy, if I may. I, I, Remy is one of the students I've known for a long time. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I was um, thinking about this. I, I met Remy right from the very beginning uh, of law school and pre-law school. Uh, she contacted us and, and, and uh, Remy has been amazing uh, throughout her law school experience. A couple of highlights I wanna bring out is, you know, um, she is one of our very few students who are joint, she did the joint uh, uh, social work and law school program. And, um, and when I say about social workers in, in the year 2021, they really are the Renaissance persons of our society. They understand how to work the different systems. And we see that, sorry, we see that with Remy. Uh, when she was a student in my um, children's advocacy clinic, she thought she was gonna get children's cases. And, uh, uh, but we had this uh, child, but he wasn't a child anymore. He was 40 years old, uh, uh, Dennis. Uh, Dennis was in prison. Uh, he received two life sentences uh, when he was 16 years old. And, uh, Remy uh, raised her hand and accepted the assignment of, of helping create a reentry plan uh, for Dennis. And, and Remy did find uh, uh, with her partner, she found a, a reentry program in, in Tallahassee that accepted Dennis. Um, we went to court and we lost. So Dennis is not released and couldn't go into the program, but we really appreciate uh, all that work that took in interviewing in, in, in order to um, find that reentry program. Uh, another comments would be is um, totally, be, and we're, I'm sure Professor Scott will talk about this. Uh, Remy did our, our um, alternative spring break. Uh, she, uh, one summer she spent it in, in, at, uh, in Atlanta at the Children's Assy uh, Center there at the Emory. So totally dedicated, and I, I, I will allow that, I'll come pass it along um, to the other professors to comment about how proud we are of you. Uh, Professor Scott, you'd like to go first? Sure, thank you. Um, very proud of you, Remy. Very excited to celebrate your accomplishments today as a Pilk advocate, student advocate. And um, yeah, it was two years ago now that I first got to know you on Alternative Spring Break. It was my first time going on Alternative Spring Break as well. Um, and so it was, it was a really enjoyable experience for me to learn um, what this wonderful program is all about firsthand. And you certainly were um, an integral participant in the program that year. Um, just a fierce advocate for social justice and for everything that's right in the world. And I love just being around you and, and getting your energy and all your passion. Um, so thank you for all your hard work on alternative spring break and as a Pilk student and throughout your law school career. I'm really, really excited 
to follow what I know is going to be an incredibly inspiring career that you are about to embark on. Great. Rose LaRoche. Hello. Um, I want to first congratulate Remy on this amazing honor, um, but also just highlight not only this honor, but her career at Pilk, mm -hmm. as you've heard um, Professor Nino and Professor Scott highlight um, as well. For me, I've known Remy, I believe before I started, um, before I was looking at my emails, but I, I, but I know I've met Remy before, um, but I'm not sure if I did. Uh, and that I think is <laughs> what <laughs> Remy uh, really exemplifies, right? Like that person, she seems like someone I've known before and who has done the work, um, though I'm not sure that actually, I'm still not sure if I did. Um, but in real life, Remy was part of the CCP twins um, the last two summers ago. I had, as a lot of my students know, I have ideas. Um, and I had the idea of creating the Collateral Consequences Project and having students uh, address some of the amendment for uh, felony rights restoration, um, voting rights restoration for people in Florida. And Gigi, who won the award last year, and Remy jumped on it. Um, and Remy and I had a conversation about what it would look like. And I think I told her I had no idea. And she still joined the clinic, the project. <laughs> and Gigi as well. And so we had many classes, which usually wind up us being in my office talking about these issues every week, having guest speakers, going out into the community, the Carney Center and trying to do intakes, hearing Remy's frustration with how difficult it is just to simply determine whether somebody has fines, fees and restitution owed to them. Um, hearing the inspiration that Remy had to do different flyers and conversations and um, from the frustration with clients, um, not clients themselves, but the uh, ability to help clients to going broader and doing that systemic reform piece or systemic piece of going out in the community again. And in this case, the community were other students, uh, undergraduate social work students who Remy and Gigi did a presentation too about Amendment 4, what it meant, its issues. Um, we also took a trip on a Saturday really early in the morning to Montgomery, and we got to see uh, the Equal Justice Initiatives um, Museum from slavery to mass incarceration and the lynching memorial. And the conversations that we had on the drive there and back were also very powerful. And I will remember those conversations, especially listening to Ta-Nehisi Coates um, um, between the world and me as we drove up, which I don't know if that was a smart thing to do as we were driving up in the middle of nowhere, um, but it was very helpful. Um, and so I'm giving just glimpses of the power and the different adaptability Remy had um, in a clinic or a project that was developing as the law was developing. The biggest piece is um, the clinic as well as Professor Lavia submitted an amicus brief to the Florida Supreme Court um, on the one, the veterans piece, um, but also on the fact that voting not being able to vote also silences children, families, and communities. And um, the state replied and quoted our brief. I mean, they told us we were wrong, uh, but they had to read it, right? right? There was no other brief that did what we did in ours, like tried to make sure people knew that we were talking about humans. We were talking about family members. Um, and so even in that short semester, which started off with, I don't know how it's going to end. And towards the end, I'm like, oh, that was, that was actually good. We did a lot um, with just two students. Uh, so congratulations to you, Remy, for the work that you have done for people who have been systemically ignored by our institutions. So, and I can't wait to look, for, I can't wait to hear what you do next. 
Thank you all. <laughs> I'm really honored. Um, I'm very glad that you told me to prepare something because there's so many things I could say about Pilk. Um, so it's better for me to just read. Um, good afternoon, y'all. Um, thank you for this award, being chosen as the Clinical Legal Education Association. Outstanding clinical student advocate is a great honor. Um, so for my last PILK assignment, I was told to prepare a few remarks. So time for visions and revisions. Um, when reflecting on what to say, I thought about December of 2016. So this has been a really long journey. Um, in December of 2016, I was tidying up my sixth grade classroom after a really long day when I received a call from an 850 number. I figured it was someone from FSU Law. So I answered in my best professional voice. Um, on the other end was a really cheerful voice that would later become my professor, mentor, and my self-proclaimed advisor, whether he liked it or not, Professor Anino. Um, he talked with me about my personal statement and my interest in juvenile law based on my experiences with my little cousin, Frank, um, who I wrote about in my personal statement, um, how he's navigated the criminal justice system throughout our childhood, and how he has continued to do so um, as I made my journey here at FSU Law. So Anino was my first encounter with the Public Interest Law Center and Pilk would become the reason why I chose to come to FSU Law. And of course, my most meaningful academic experience in my journey here. Um, so this award means so much because through Pilk, I've had the opportunity to discover my voice and my purpose in the law and to work with the most intelligent, inspiring, passionate and hardworking law students like Taylor um, and Gigi, um, professors and clients. Each of you have played a part in counseling me, laughing with me, being patient with me, discussing major issues with me, challenging me, and being an example of the type of attorney that I hope to soon, very, very soon be. So thank you for believing in my work, affirming my vision for this JD MSW, recommending me for opportunities and connecting me with people in your circles because it does mean the world. Um, after graduation, I will be completing a fellowship doing juvenile life without parole work in um, New Orleans, which y'all know I love so much. Um, my parting message for myself and for each of us is that um, while so much is going on in the world right now, public interest law is more crucial than ever in every branch and at every level, um, but we can't pour from an empty cup. So let's really pace ourselves, take care of ourselves so that we can sustain and do this noble and honorable work we've been called to do. So thank you for recognizing me and my work and many blessings on each of your future endeavors. I know our paths are gonna cross in the future. So thank y'all. Well, that was, that was great, that was great. Uh, uh, we're really honored, uh, Remy, uh, and, and appreciate all your kind thoughts and words. Um, next, we turn to uh, a, uh, an award that that's, uh, that's, was created by the Public Interest Law Center. Uh, the first recipient was Gigi Green, and uh, we're proud of Gigi. Um, and we're proud now to uh, honor uh, Lily McLaughlin. Uh, I asked uh, uh, on the award and, and Carl, we're gonna show it on the screen. It's the Advocate on the Rise, Advocate on the Rise. And Advocate on the Rise is, a, is an award that really shows um, a student that really made incredible progress through his or her experiences at uh, the Public Interest Law Center. Uh, we, um, all the professors, and that's one thing I want to mention, I, don't, I, I, I probably failed to mention it earlier, um, concerning Remy, it was unanimous. All, it was a unanimous vote uh, for Remy and for Lily, because uh, uh, for Lily, uh, we just saw so much progress in your time at the Public Interest Law Center. Uh, in my clinic and in Professor LaRoche's clinic. Uh, let me just maybe just say that you've done so much at Public Interest Law Center, um, but let me just say one comment that really, um, really brought it home for me at least that you're the right person for this award. Um, one day, not asking, not asking at all. I wasn't like asking or any. One day, um, it just comes out. Oh, uh, what were you up to, Lily? 
and whatever this, you know, whatever way I began the conversation. And it turns out that Lily brought a box of food uh, for one of our clients that was had food insecurity. And that was a major problem we had all in 2020. Many of our clients had food insecurities. And Lily was just out there. And she wasn't like, you know, bragging about it or telling about it. She was just doing it. And I, I just I just really appreciated that because really, you know, our clients, you can't even do an interview if they're on, right? You know, and it really just, and it creates trust. And one of the big themes I talk about in my clinics all the time is, you know, if you want to um, really make progress in your cases, you gotta develop trust with your clients and, and, and bringing food, going at extra steps uh, and literally over and over again, uh, did these extra steps. So uh, that's why I, I immediately thought of Lily. Uh, again, uh, let me pass it along to uh, uh, others. Uh, maybe uh, uh, Professor LaRoche, you wanna go next? Sure, changing it up. Um, Lily, uh, I will focus on one case because it took over Lily's life for a bit. It took over the clinic's life for a bit. Um, one of our injunction cases okay. for a year and a half. And midway through the semester, Lily became the head CLI on this case. Um, we did mocks of an upcoming hearing for Lily to prepare. She received like research from different members of the class, uh, incorporated all of that research, all of the ideas. Um, we had another um, experienced attorney come in and also give her feedback. And she took all of that in and made it her own and appeared before a judge that we'd gotten an adverse ruling um, previously on this matter. And um, Lily just, was such a strong advocate for our client to the point where Lily didn't realize that we had actually won the hearing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so she was so determined to make sure the court knew who our client was and what our client wanted and why our client wanted what she really under the law deserved. And so it was very meaningful for the client to have Lily on, by her side, seeking the court understanding, but also the ruling that we got. Um, and so it was impressive for Lily to come in late into the, the case and represent the client in that way. And ha she's grown so much through that case and through um, her own self-reflection. So she's definitely on the rise and is completely continuing to go on that direction. So congratulations, Lily. All right. Uh, yes. so we're going in reverse chronological order. <laughs> yes, yes. I had Lily for her first clinic at Pilk. Um, she took the oh. in Farmer Group Project this summer after her 1L year. And I immediately knew she was going to be a great student. She was very intellectually curious and hardworking and passionate, um, always going above and beyond to do the best job she could possibly do uh, for her clients. So it's really um, rewarding for me to hear from Professor LaRoche and Professor Nino what, how she went on to just you know truly continue to rise. And so this is just such a perfect award for her. And I'm really excited um, to honor you, Lily. And thank you for all you've done for all of all of our PILT clinics, all of our clients, the community, um, all the ways you've gone above and beyond and not just considered yourself a lawyer, but you know, considered yourself someone who's interested in the whole well-being of, of your clients. And that is such a critical skill and is going to serve you so well in your career. So we're all very proud of you. Lily, would you like to say a few words? Yes. Um, thank you so much. Um, I um, I've loved my experience at Pilk. I think Pilk is the gem of FSU law, and I am so grateful to 
have um, done so many, almost almost all of the clinics and have the opportunity to, ha to have um, almost all the professors at Pilk. And I just think about um, little one L me doing Professor Scott's immigration clinic compared to um, now and just um, how much growth I have even seen in myself um, from like, in that time. And so I just wanna thank everyone at Pilk. I wanna thank um, uh, people in my, who I've worked with before, students walk, I see Walker here, I see Gigi here, Abigail here. Um, for, for um, all the support. Um, I want to thank my parents who are my greatest support system and their whole entire office that's on this Zoom call right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, thank you guys for all the love and support and I'm so grateful and um, I hope that I will have the opportunity to work with you guys again sometime. <laughs> well, we, we're hoping to stay in touch and mm -hmm. we're hoping to uh, uh, really, um, we're taking so much pride in, in what both both you, both Remy and you are are going to be accomplishing too. So.